Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be, she pushed me away and asked for space. Well, that's definitely not something you want to hear from your girlfriend or see her actually doing to you. But I've got a couple of emails. I'm going to go through two different emails today with two, from two different viewers. So before we get into it, i got a quote that I wrote in this topic I want to share with you, and then we're going to jump right in. And the quote says, sometimes in life, people's goals and values evolve over time to the point that they are no longer aligned. When this happens, it's always best to let them go, wish them well on their journey, and be content with the fact that you gave it your best effort. Sometimes you may outgrow your lover or they may outgrow you. When things become dull, stagnant, and boring, it's time to either refocus on giving to one another if you have gotten caught up in life or time to move on when you simply no longer feel the same internal desire to be with them romantically or make the effort. Time and space away from you is the best medicine for someone who no longer wants to be with you. Give them the gift of missing you. If they really truly value you and don't want to lose you, they will come back. If they don't, then you know it's over. So let's go ahead and jump right in the first guy's email. He says, hey coach, I've watched most of your videos and recently purchased your book. Have you read it 10 to 15 times yet? And for those of you who haven't started reading the book, either the Kindle edition or the paperback edition, right now you can go to my website underneath the email sign-up box. There's an image of my book. You can click on that and go. it will take you right to Amazon servers. And underneath the book image, you can select either paperback edition or you can download the Kindle edition to any electronic device in under 60 seconds. So he said, he continues on, over a year ago, my friend's sister and I decided we weren't going to fight our feelings for each other anymore, which had been going on for years prior, and we began officially dating. Things couldn't have been better. We were best friends and lovers. She's a few years younger than me and was recently out of college. We had a great year together, talking and seeing each other whenever we could as I live in New York City and she's in Philadelphia. We never fought, but after a year, real life started catching up with her. First job, first apartment, little money. She started to push me away and ask for space to figure out a few things as she was stressed and not happy with herself. You guys live pretty far apart. It's like, how much space do you fucking want? But the real reality is, is she was losing attraction and losing interest. Maybe it was in the things that were you were doing and showing up. And obviously, having read the book, those things are going to be clearer to you. Or maybe she was going through some difficult times. Maybe she really was a little bit – had some issues that she had to deal with. And it's really hard to keep a long-term, long-distance relationship going. I mean I, I did that. I had a gal I dated in the UK. I wrote about it in my book. I mean it's a 14, 15-hour plane ride. From the time she hops in the plane till she actually shows up at the airport. And plus on top of that, especially if you live in another country, it's like each time you come over, the customs and immigration people in the States start to look at your girl or if you're a woman, your guy and scrutinize them more and more. And, and they can have a wild hair up their ass and they can say, you know what? You've been here too many times and you're not coming in. Hop on a plane and go back. And that's it. And so that was always the fear that was there whenever she would come to visit but we would always focus on a good intention that everything would be fine and she always got through no problem. He says it was at this point I was understanding and supporting, giving her space but still reaching out every other week. Well in that particular instance what you should have done is is said, you know what, I don't want to take a break but if you need some time for yourself then you know what, give me a call when you figure things out. That's what you should have done. You shouldn't have just kept calling and trying to be her therapist or act like her gay male girlfriend. Because what's going on here is she's unilaterally changing the terms of your relationship, obviously not to your liking. And you don't have to go along with that. But the worst thing you can do is continue pursuing because you're basically what's going on is she's friend zoning you. And if you continue to reach out, you're acquiescing to that. A guy who perceives himself as a catch is going to say, hey, I don't want to take any – I understand you're going through a difficult time. If you need to talk about it, let's get together and talk about it but you just want space and you want to break up you want to see other people i'm not down with that you're that tells me after all the time that we've known each other you're quitting on us you're just giving up on us you're tossing us aside like what we had doesn't mean anything and that that hurts me that makes me sad that you're doing that but if that's what you really want then great give me a call when you figure it out and you walk and you never look back that's how a man handles these things because he wants to continue showing up and making an effort in the relationship but she's saying, no, I don't want to try anymore. 
When a woman says she needs space, what she's really saying is, I want to break up with you. I don't want to see you anymore. He says, it was at this point that I was understanding and supportive, giving her space, but I still reached out every other week. I was legitimately worried about her but tried to use the phone only to schedule a time to talk or see each other. So you basically became her therapist. He says, she came to New York City a few months after the space talk and we had a great time. I decided not, we decided not to rush back in anything but talk and hang out when we could. Hang out, have fun, and hook up. That's the best way to go about it. She was obviously probably going through some stressful things in her life but if you were over pursuing, if you were focused on the relationship, where things were going and she's already going through a difficult time, you're bringing drama and complications into her life instead of being that fun, playful lover that she fell in love with. He says she was doing 80% of the communication at this point and after a month of hanging out again, she became shady and unresponsive. That tells me you're continuing to pursue. It's just a bad way to go. Another month went by with little communication responses to texts and calls. That definitely tells me, me that you were over pursuing her. She's blowing you off and yet you continue to call and chase and pursue trying to change your mind. And you can say, oh, it's because you were worried about her but what was really going on is you were worried that she was dumping you and didn't love you anymore. And when you act this way, all you're going to do is drive her away further. Because when a woman says, I need space, it means stop calling me. I don't want to see you right now. Leave me alone. But when you continue to pursue, you're just acting needy and desperate. And all that does is reinforce to her that she made the right decision by dumping you or putting you back in friend zone. She finally reached out to me and was honest with me about things that she thought we wouldn't work out. We dated for a year but had been friends for 10 years. Trying, and she was trying to put me back in friend zone. I then calmly told her how I felt that she hurt me and we couldn't be in each other's lives right now if that's how she felt. He says, I will now try your strategy of walking away and see what happens. I'll be moving to Philly in a few months for a new job so I'll run into her sooner or later. Are you moving to a new city to chase her, dude? That's a bad fucking move. The only reason you should be moving to Philly is because you really want to live there, not because you think being in that city and forcing yourself upon her or in her life is going to make her want you back. That's a bad fucking move. I talk to guys all the time that do that. Even women I, I talk to are doing the same thing. That's stalkerish behavior, dude. He says, a good part about the situation, I guess, is that she was the one who screwed things up, so my buddy and I are still close. What you need to do at this point is absolutely fucking nothing. Even if you move to Philly, don't call her, don't do nothing. If she wants to reach out, and you're already there. You say, hey, guess what? I'm, I've been living in Philly for a month. Why didn't you call me? It was like, well, you said you needed space. Silly. God, I would love to see you. Why don't, when are you free to get together? And then you make a date. You've got to wait for her to reach out because she's the one that said I need space. And what you've been doing is not respecting her wishes. You continue to pursue and act needy and desperate and now it looks like you're moving to her city. It's like that's a bad way to go, dude. And like I said, wait to hear from her. And if you do hear from her, assume she wants to see you. Make the next date and then get the hell off the phone. Stop trying to be her therapist or her emotional tampon or to fix her or to be there for her and all that other BS. So let's move on to the second guy's email. He says, hey coach, here's an update on my situation. I'm the first guy whose email you read in the video that you did. She has a boyfriend, which was back in September of 2013. Shortly after this video went up, she disappeared. She didn't contact me for three months. And one day, late in February, she called me. Huh. Imagine that. What a coinky dink. She tried to make a bunch of excuses, but I told her calmly, no need to explain. Sounds like you've been paying attention, dude. Good job. The bottom line is if you wanted to reach out to me, you would have. She didn't argue with that because that's the truth. What's so beautiful is when you really understand this stuff and you really get to understand how women are and they – and she and your girl is in a position and she's saying something like this or something that I've talked about in my book and you know exactly what's going on and you throw that out there, they'll love you for it because that communicates that you know what the fuck you're doing and you're respecting her wishes. He says she mentioned that she bumped into a fellow co-worker and I came up in the conversation. Always an excuse like that. Hey, I saw a movie and it reminded me of you. Oh, what a kawinky dink. Who would have thunk it? He says she claimed it to she claimed it to her a week to get the courage oh it took her a week to get the courage to call me. Nice spelling job, dude. If you're gonna send me an email, make sure you do spell check and you have complete sentences with complete grammar. He says she assumed I was going to hate her. 
I laughed and just continued to talk like no time had passed. Sounds like something a charming and funny and playful James Bond would do. I think somebody's been paying attention to what I teach. Remember, it took three months. He says, the thing is, coach, after those three months, I assumed she was gone and accepted that. Isn't that a great place to be? It's like you totally let go of it and you're just like, whatever, I could take it or leave it. It'd be nice to hear from her, but hey, if I don't hear from her, then it was a good time. Good time was had by all. He says, so while catching him was nice, I figured I may as well just take this situation for what it is. No expectations. Keep moving along with my life and entertaining the other women that had come around in the meantime. Nice job. Good job, dude. He says, for a month after that, she never called but would text me about once a week just to keep in touch. Well, I would have made a date with her. I would have been like, hey, great to hear from you, sweetie. I want to see you. When are you free to get together? Well, I'm still kind of seeing this other guy. Well, I don't care about him. Obviously, you called me because you miss me and – I don't blame you. I, you know, of course, let's get together. When are you free? Oh, well, I got this guy. I was like, okay, well, you know what? Why don't you resolve whatever it is that's going on with him? And when that guy's out of the picture, give me a call and we'll plan something in. All right, sweetie? I got to run. Keep in touch. Bye. And then you get the fuck off the phone. That's how you handle that. He says, one day, then one day I get a call and she's getting ready to fly overseas for a month to take care of family matters. I could tell something else was going on. Finally, she told me, her boyfriend ended it with her two days before. Huh. Imagine that. Another coinky dink. Wow. It's like a boomerang. It's like you throw it, but it's like the relationship boomerang. Sometimes it takes months. Sometimes even years. Sometimes girls come back, you know, after a long term relationship ends, that's what they do. They go through their Rolodex and start calling old, calling old boyfriends. And if you've been studying my work and you got dumped because you screwed up and you kind of leave the door open, you never know what's good. that boomerang is going to come back and whack you in the back of the head. He says, to this day, I am unsure why. Well, she broke up with her boyfriend and you're the first guy that came to her mind. Why? Because the last time she reached out to you, you were cool and acted as nothing had ever happened. Obviously, if you've been paying attention to what I teach in my book, you should assume that she wants to see you. Hey, babe, it's really great to hear from you. Well, we got to get together before you go on this trip. When are you free? Make a date at your place. Have her come over. Bring a bottle of wine. Bring coffee, tea, whatever you guys drink. Doesn't have to be alcohol. Make dinner together. Hang out. Have fun and hook up just like I talk about in my book. Don't be talking about getting back together or all that relationship stuff and start complicating her life. Make it easy for her to come back by just simply creating an opportunity for sex to happen. But she told me he wanted her out of his life 100%. No contact, no friendship. Just go away. So sad. Now here are some things I have figured out about her. She is somewhat antisocial. She doesn't go out and socialize on her own. She's the type that meets men wherever she is working. She obviously must be an attractive girl. When a guy enters her life, her entire social circle is made up of his friends and whoever are her coworkers at the time, with the exception of her ex-boyfriends. In recent times, she is working for the family business, so she is just working with family. This guy led her left her and took all his friends with him. So sad. So I am all that's left. Oh, baby, come see me. I miss you. He said two weeks ago, she returned from her overseas trip and called me the next day. Another coinky dink. I'm shocked. Shocked, I tell you. If you ever saw that movie, ah, it was Humphrey Bogart. Um, it was, the, God, it was, it's like on the tip of my tongue. It's like a famous movie that took place like during World War II. It was like, is hugely successful movie where there was a part where because obviously the Germans invaded France where the French police were kind of corrupt and they were getting paid off and so there's a bunch of Germans in there and he comes in and he discovers all this illegal activity and he's like I'm shocked shocked I tell you that this has been going on that's where that comes from Casablanca that's the movie he says she was very sweet, but it was obvious the problems in her life were still very present. Well, that's okay. You can be a fun, playful, sexy escape for her. Not just the ex, but personal issues and she believed have been ruining her relationships her whole life. Oh, baby, that sucks. You know what? I'm going to see you. Like, why don't you grab a bottle of wine and come on over to my place and we can talk about it and catch up. When are you free to get together? That's how you handle it. In that tone of voice. Sweet, charming, playful. Oh, baby, this is how you talk to your girl. Just because you haven't seen her in several months, she's still your girl. When you open the door, you're going to kiss her on the lips, say, lips and say, hey, baby, you look good. You know what? I think your lips are still a little dry. Let me, let me kiss them some more. 
He says, I encouraged her to get help. Things deteriorated. So to get help, don't be your therapist, dude. Be her playful, fun lover. Be the escape. He says, things deteriorated and she would call me just totally a mess. Oh, baby. Oh, that sounds so sad. You know what? Grab a bottle of wine. Come on over. Grab some coffee. Come on over. Bring me some soup. Come on over. Bring me some tuna fish. Bring me a tuna fish sandwich. Come on over. I miss you. Make that that favorite salmon salad of mine that I like so much. Get your little ass over here. She started opening up and talking about the things she never talked to anyone about before. You're definitely moving into therapist mode, dude. Don't do it. Invite her over. Make a date. That's why she reached out. Assume she wants to see you. She needs to escape from her life that's full of drama and problems and complications. And here you are, the charming James Bond, because you've been studying Corey Wayne's work. He said some really ugly stuff and some things she blew out of proportion. I would let her vent and each time she told me she felt better before ending the call. Mm -mm -mm. You're being her therapist instead of creating an opportunity for sex to happen. So this brings us to the present. Over the past week, things are becoming interesting. She has set the appointment to get counseling. Oh, goody. The same day she got a call about a very promising job opportunity. Well, you are definitely moving into her gay male girlfriend zone. Good job. I'm sure that's what you want. She said, I finally see a light at the end of the tunnel. You know what? I got something for you. It's big. It's round. And it's hard. And it has a head on it. Oh, it's a quarter, silly. She then got all gushy. She started praising me. You know what? I think you need to come over and make mad, passionate love to me. Get your little ass over here. What are you free? So much stuff I can't remember at all. But it covered everything from being a stud, the importance of my work, and everything in between. She then began began going over our past. Oh, come on, man. Didn't you pay attention to anything I've been trying to – you started off so good. The email started off so great. She said she liked being the one doing all of the calling. Big shock. Another woman confirming exactly what I teach. They like that. It's part of bonding and connection. That's feminine energy. That's just what they do. They're wired that way. Let them come to you at their own pace. She hated nothing more than having to chit-chat on the phone with nothing to say. Well, it sounds like the conversations were becoming dull and boring because you talked too long on the phone instead of making dates. I want you to take your right hand and reach out and choke yourself, bro. But she also pointed out that I should see that her being the one maintaining contact as a sign she has always felt something for me. No. No shit, Sherlock. She's trying to be fucking obvious. When are you going to invite me over and fuck my brains out? That's what she's really saying to you. Coach, I didn't push this. I was relaxed in the conversation. This literally came out of nowhere. Come on, man. You ain't been paying attention. September? That's when I did the last... God, it's fucking May right now, dude. Where you been, dude? You ain't been learning the fundamentals? Come on, man. This literally came out of nowhere. Then she went on picking out other things she has said in the past that should have let me know... She's interested in me. She said, I think we, you and I can get in touch, get through anything together. Dude, how obvious does she have to fucking be? She's painting the picture of you and me. And what are you doing? I didn't know what to do with that. I feel a little, my penis is feeling a little tingly, but I don't know what to do with that. Talking to you got me through my trip, and since then, it has helped me get out of bed every day. The way you have handled me, you are doing everything right, except creating an opportunity for sex to happen. She fell silent for four days. When she finally called, she seemed different. Yeah, I think she's probably fucking giving up on you. It's like, get a clue, dude. Somewhat distant. I maintained my usual self, and by the end of the call, she invited me to her a date to her brother's wedding. So you even made her ask you out. Fucking A, dude. See, a lot of guys do what you're doing just thinking, I won't bring up anything. I won't do anything. And then when she brings it up, you ask her out on two separate occasions. If she turns you down on both those occasions, then you never ask her again. He says, I told her I would love to, but because I had to travel, I wanted her to take some time to really think about that. Oh, dude, if you were here, I would fucking bitch slap you so hard. Come on, man. Seriously. I want you to really think about that. Please come up with a reason not to see me. Please come up with a reason not to fuck my brains out even though this is what I wanted for so long. If she wants me there, I will be there. Dude, what did she just say to you? 
She invited you to the wedding. I need. I think you need to really think about this. Oh, come on, dude. You're a fucking stiff statue, bro. I received a text two days later. Mark your calendar for the wedding. I replied, done. She called and asked if I wanted to go to a small family thing the day after the wedding. Sure, that sounds great. I said, sure. We started sorting out the hotel details and she asked if she could pick the hotel because she planned on staying with me and would like for it to be closer to certain areas. Well, you've pretty much given her all the power, so... Just as I loved everything I was hearing, she told me her ex had been back in touch. Uh Uh-oh. It just so happens to have fallen on those four days of silence. Big shock because she's – because maybe the ex is actually acting like a man. You've been just dancing around in circles, dude. She said, I was hopeful we may be able to work something out, but it quickly became obvious things are worse than before. He's not listening to me at all. We are supposed to meet for a meal and I just have some things I need to say so I can move forward. I maintain my cool, hey, Fonzie style, I'm sure. I maintain my cool and told her to do what she must, then switch back to the wedding plans. I know she still has feelings for the ex. Now I fear I will start making these plans for the wedding just for him to weasel his way back in. Well, you've been fucking giving him every opportunity to come back, dude, because you're just dancing around in circle. And lose money and take time from work for nothing. But her timing is interesting. How would James Bond think? Of course she wants to fuck me. Of course she misses me because no guy knows what I know. That's the way you should be focusing on things. She made the move to ask after he had resurfaced. She has already spoken to the family about my appearance. Who knows what will happen and part of me feels a victory for the feelings she expressed. I really do not believe it would have got to this stage without your book and videos guiding me. Dude, it could have happened a lot quicker, bro. It's like, why don't you go ahead and make things a hundred times harder than they need to be? It will be interesting to see where things will be in another seven months. No matter what it is. So you're all focused on the relationship and getting back together. Big mistake. Hang out, have fun, and hook up. I say it all the time. That's why I say it in the book. So guys who just can't wrap their head around how simple things can be when a woman really likes you will focus on the small fundamental of hanging out, having fun, and hooking up. He says, no matter what it has been, a great lesson has changed the way I look at these situations. Thank you again. Well, like I said, dude, it could have been a hell of a lot easier, but thanks for sending a good email. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to book a paid phone, Skype, or email coaching session with yours truly. You can choose any of those options by going to my website, clicking the products tab at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions. And I will talk to you soon. 